<laughs> First of all, I'm very sorry for ghosting my channel. You know, it's been a while. But that's a story for another time. Maybe a life update. <laughs> Can that be my life update? Anyway, this video is not about me right now. It's about you, actually. So, if you're like me, who's doing their part, staying at home, in quarantine, and helping from our homes, um, I know at this point, you already have access to different ways to help. If you don't, hit me up on Facebook. I can hook you up with ways on how to donate for frontliners and even for our fellow Filipinos who are currently um, not earning because of what's going on. So, that's not about that at the moment. This is about you. I know that... People are saying you are lucky to be able to stay home with your internet and your Netflix and YouTube. Um, but I know you also have your anxieties, you also have your fears. And for me, actually, I work from home. I've been working from home for like six years. So the physical changes um, do not really affect me that much in a sense that, you know, my routine doesn't really change much that said i also had a lot of um fears and anxieties to deal with plants helped me to to stay present so that's very very important if you're worried about the uncertainties of the future we can't really do anything about that the future would always be uncertain so what I do is I, I make sure to spend some time each day with my plants. So I realized, hey, if this is helping me, it might help you. It might, um, you know, at least help you pass time, diba? Oh. I invited a few amazing plantosias. I'm going to put their names and their Instagram usernames. So make sure to check them out. You will see their amazing healthy plant collection so these people they've been doing this for a while and they have you know learned <laughs> a thing or two about plants hopefully it's gonna help um, you it's gonna help those who are already into plants and it's gonna help encourage those who want to get into plants and you yun lang I hope you enjoy this Collaboration. Hi, plant hoarders. My name is Rico, and just like Meg, I am from Pampanga, where the weather is crazy hot. And I started collecting plants since early of last year, and the rest is history. One of the best plants for me is yung ating mga monstera deliciosa. They are easy to grow. They don't need too much attention, and hindi mo sila kailangan diligan every day. We actually have three Monstera Deliciosas. Uh, this is the green one. Then we have the Monstera Deliciosa Thai Constellation. I actually have two of these. And I thought this died on me, but apparently it didn't. Good morning, guys. So um, today I agreed to do a collaboration video with Homie uh, Man. Allow me to first tour you around my plants so that you can see my current condition and why am I saying um, such thing is what's the best plan for me I'd say um, there is no specific plan for me it depends on the you know the, the environment that I can give it and the you know how much care I can I can you know give the plant but in general I would say um, the best or the easiest plant of the aroids is the philodendron because one they um, they require less water um, it won't you know kill itself if you overwater it it's, you know but once that's just one in a while in case you know, or if you miss to water it yeah so like as you can see in my garden uh, you can see more um, what do you call this more philodendrons than the other genus Hi, my name is Erica, and I'm here to talk about my basic uh, uh, houseplant care. 
So before we move forward with our conversation, I want to talk about the living condition. Because you see, each indoor or houseplant care will differ or vary depending on your living condition. So today, I want to focus on my um, alocasias. I want to discuss to you how I was able to keep them uh, alive and lush here inside my condo. Hello. This is Plant Saint, and today I'm gonna talk about light. Three things. First thing, I think that light has a greater priority over medium and watering. Um, you can change your medium, you can change your watering, but if your light isn't good enough, your plant's not gonna thrive. Number two, you have to understand the direction of the sun uh, for at least a year. So here in my shade house, this time of the year, the sun comes from the east, which is where I'm facing at. And um, on my right is the south, and that's the north, and that's the west behind me. And um, the sun just comes through differently uh, throughout different times of the year. So you have to understand that, and you have to adjust your plants, and that's the third point. You have to adjust your plants, you can divide your gardens into zones, and when you finally understood how uh, each of your plants were reacting to the intensity of the sun, um, to the uh, if, if they're receiving enough light, um, that's when you see your plants thrive. Hi everyone, my name is Ivy and I grow my plants in a condominium. So when you plan to grow your plants indoors, you have to classify them first if they're plants that require bright indirect light, medium light, or low light. So to know this, you can research on the light requirements of your plant or ask the seller kung paano yung growing conditions niya sa nursery, if it's under a shade outdoors or if it's inside a greenhouse. Personally, I don't recommend growing plants in a low light condition kasi sobrang madalas nagkakaroon ng root rot ang plants kahit na sabihin nila na, oh this can thrive in a low lighting condition. So, I personally adjust my guidelines to bright indirect light, medium light, and then there's intense. Bright indirect light is when the plant is positioned near a window or in a, in a corner that is bright, pero hindi siya direct ang aabot ng sun rays. This is what I would consider as bright indirect light. Medium light naman kapag maliwanag pa din, hindi kasing liwanag ng bright indirect light. Pero it's still good enough for you to make a shadow or to read a book. As you can see, I can still make a shadow with my hand and I can still read in this corner. So it's good enough for this anthurium, but not all plants or very few plants can survive in this kind of lighting condition. Intense indoor light naman ang tawag ko sa corner ng house, halimbawa sa tabi ng window, na naaarawan. As you can see, the sun's rays are coming through the windows. So this is where I put my plants that require consistent, strong light. Okay, so this is my plant box by the windowsill. Uh, these plants get direct afternoon sun for a few hours. My caladiums are very happy here in this allocation. You can always download an app. It's called the Lux Light Meter. That's what I use. Para makita nyo kung ilang lux or foot candles yung light doon sa paglalagyan nyo ng plant. So pro tip, if you want to grow your plants um, indoors, if you're in doubt, you always go for bright indirect light. So with the living condition, I live in a condo, um, no balcony, just a huge window that gets morning sun. So since I get morning sun, my window faces east. Generally speaking, all my plants have been uh, thriving in this light condition. So um, it actually took a while for me to um, understand uh, lighting conditions. Um, based on my living conditions. So um, it's best if you can actually observe and see which direction your window is facing. So from there you can work on how to place your plants. So there are ways that um, you can do your plant uh, placing. 
uh, you can actually put it in bright direct meaning where the sun hits directly so those are my al alokashas over there on top they're the front liners for the morning sun and then the ones that are away a bit away from the window um, maybe for example like the ones in the chair um, since it's it, it blocks the morning sun or it does the morning sun doesn't hit them uh, you can call them the bright indirect light so those are the light conditions based on my living conditions Around my plants so that you can see my current condition and why am i saying um, such thing when it comes to watering my plant again this is just a disclaimer this is a general guideline for me um, whatever works for me works for me but uh, for most of us who lives in the city um, uh, we tend to transform or you know, turn the tiny spaces that we have at home into a garden now for my simple rule when it comes to watering my plant I, I follow this old very simple and common uh, watering technique um, that I usually hear from you know my mentors you water your plants according to the amount of light it gets but because i live in the city there's also another concentration from my end which is of course i have to water my plants according to two things one is according to the amount of light it gets and and you can hear it right and that's the second one it's in the uh, in the quality of air circulation my plants get uh, my plants get so um the reason being is because um, there are some plants who cannot tolerate wet feet um, and there are some plants who would like to dry out, totally dry out before watering and there are even some plants who would like to um, be always moist. Um, and so for me, that, that, that tip works because um, you can actually position the plants depending on you know their requirements. If they require uh, so much light or much needed light, then you put it near the like for this one this is the the grills already so the sill of our grills um, i just put them there and for some this is my the window sill and i you know those that requires um light but not really much light not too much light and i put them here um those that requires less light then i put them also here and so and because of that i water this plant less often compared to the plants on this side of um, my home or of my balcony um, and as you can see another tip when it comes to watering is for some of the alopecias they would like to be waterlogged so they want to you know to be always uh, have that consistent humidity level and I usually put this is one of the hack I learned from from uh, from Tita May and, and that is to put water at the bottom or you know put a water tray on your alocasia pots because one it increases the the humidity and two it keeps the soil very moist the plants that are getting hit by a direct morning sun they are the ones that i have to water um, religiously like especially now it's summer and um dude it's so hot like i'm actually sweating right now so majority of my plants are alocasia as you can see, they've been thriving even indoors. Uh, some uh, are just sprouting new growth now, uh, like my um, Alocasia Melo and the uh, Sinuata. But basically, to keep humidity, I have a catch plate below. Um, to signal the water, if I need to water, as you can see, if it's dry, the catch plate, that means I need the water. So. They are kind of dry right now, meaning I need to water. Yeah. It could be a catch plate, a catch vase, <laughs> or a catch pot. So yeah. For those who um, didn't understand what a catch plate or pot is, so this is the pot, and then this is the plate below. There you go. That's where the water drains. I don't throw it. I usually just keep it there for humidity for the plants with high humidity um, preference. Or sometimes you can put rocks or pebbles, just like that one I did with my um, alocasias. So there you have it. All of them have catch 
um, pots and plates. So another signal for me to know if I need to water my alokasha is this one. Hold on. See? The edges have curled inwards. So that means I have to water her. So that's one sign. See? So look at the difference. Right? So that's when you know you need to water. And it you shouldn't be um, waiting for this to happen. So this is my bad. But for those who want to play it safe, um, you can actually use a moisture meter. You can buy this um, in Lazada, Shopee, or Cash. It's pretty cheap. Um, it ranges from 300 to 1000 bucks. Uh, this has been more successful to me than the Susty one. I actually tried one, but it's very inconsistent so and pricey. So I'd rather you use the um, soil moisture meter. All you have to do is just um, poke the soil and then it's gonna tell you the reading that I need to water so usually I don't just do it in one area I do it in multiple areas of the um, of the pot of the soil to make sure that I have that it's equally uh, dry and that I have watered it equally for me mix and then people have been asking me how do you mix go for arrows Begonias. So, ito siya. Uh, ito yung itsura ng mix ko. So, ayan. Ito siya. So, everything's from Everich. So, meron tayong carbonized rice hull. Fresh rice hull. And then, service squatting mix. Dermicast. Sometimes I play, sometimes I don't. Cocoa dust. So cocoa dust. Cocoa dust. And... Pumice. Oh, yes. Ina-eyeball ko lang siya. I don't know, generic mix ko lang siya. As in, I use this as a base for everything. Tapos, ina-amend ko na lang. Ayun. As, as kung papansin nyo, sobrang maipa. Kasi, tamad ako mag-fertilize. Uh, so, I re rely on, ano, sa pag-decay ng rice hull. Kaya, may iba siya. So, so, other people say they hate it. Ako, I love it kasi nag-dedicate siya. Nasty, very fast. At the end of the day, fertilizer pa rin siya. So, you will have to uh, apply a stopping mga uh, once a month. Ayan. Uh, ito yung example ng ano. Ito, this is Alocasia heterophylla. Ang um, lindo na ako. Punok siya na 10 leaves. And then whatever it is, then the actual mix. Now, may dead leaves siya kasi pag nagdedicay, ito can also serve as a fertilizer. But for CNS, we have ginagamit ko yung generic potting mix ko. Tapos, I meant ko with lots of pomis. Allo species. Naka, ang gamit ko dito right now is the pure potting mix kasi summer. So, hindi porket CNS siya ibig sabihin nakayanin niya yung init. Kailangan din ng tubig. So, ayan siya. So, naka pure. Pinalitan ko siya ng pure. Yung, yung, yung ano, potting mix ko. Tapos, come rainy, ano, rainy season, babalik ko siya sa mas mataas na pumice percentage. Siya. Ginagamit ko rin siya actually for Oh yes. Kaka good lang, as you can see. So, what I do, ang amendment ko sa kanya is Coca Chips. Kasi at the end of the day, hindi pa rin sila succulent or cacti. There's, there, most of them are vines, pero epiphytes, yung medium talaga nila, minsan sa, sa nook ng puno yun. 
three ay uh, mga deep deep letter sa mga nakulong so, so in a way yung next ko ginagamit ko siya for hoyas din so kasi para rin siya deep letter snake plant snake plant usually rin ina-amend ko usually I also use type of is the presentation of medium pero since dry season nga nandito siya ngayon sa pure uh, generic potting medium this one silver quill or deliboria socialis contrary to ano kasi uh, mukha siyang CNS pero hindi talaga siyang CNS especially ngayon mainit so kailangan niya ng water so size tier soil mix, I don't usually change the soil mix for my plants, especially kung trusted naman yung seller. But for my aroids, I normally just use light medium. For example, vermicast, cocoa husk, cocoa peat, as well as perlite. Hi, I'm Iwan, your plant hoarder from Pasig. Ngayon, tuturo ko kung paano gumawa ng general aroid mix. So, when you say aroid, it's part of the family of the RBCA. Yan yung mga philodendrons, aglonemas, anthuriums, and a whole lot more. Uh, so here, ito yung mga ingredients ko. Uh, usually, what I use kasi are non-soil. So, talagang malinis siya. Uh, usually kasi pag soil-based ang yung potting mix, uh, madaming insecto na kasama. So, Let's start uh, with let's start with two parts of cocoa peat. Uh, yung cocoa peat po, uh, yung yung bao ng niyog na tinurog hanggang sa maging powder siya. So, ayan. Uh, two parts noon, one part ng pumice. Yan. one part ng uh, coco cubes. Uh, the reason why I'm using coco cubes and pumice, it's because uh, gusto natin maging well draining yung medium. Ayaw natin na mag-hold ng maraming water. Nakaka-promote ng aeration or ng circulation ng air sa roots. Uh, the reason for that, uh, mas madaling ma-push ng roots yung medium mo. Uh, mas madali siyang mag-ugat. Next is, ito medyo failure ko lang siya, pero another reason for this is it's hydrophobic. So, uh, nagahalo tayo ng hydroscopic yung coco peat na hold ng water and yung tatlong elements ng pumice, coco cubes, and ipa. This one is ipa or rice hull. Yung balat ng bigas. Ayan, halo na natin. Uh, usually, uh, gumagawa na ako nito in advance. And usually, hindi ko siya sinishare sa iba. And this one is my basic bitch mix. So, yung mga basic philodendrons, aglonemas, and uh, actually, caliduums ko, ito rin ang gamit. At saka, uh, colocations. Yung iba kasi binibigyan ko ng plants and nagsasabi sila, so yung bilis ng laki ng plants mo. Uh, isa pong secret ay add vermicast. So, for every part, yung yung recipe nun, half part nun ng vermicast. So, yan. Ito po ay si uh, philodendron, pedatum, var, glad hands. Diba? Maganda yung roots kasi gamit ko yung medium din na, na tinimpla ko. Ayan. So usually scrunch crunch mo lang ng konti. Uh, I don't want to damage so much of the roots 
kailangan lang maging loose siya para tumubo siya sa bagong medium. So, isa pang ano, advice, always use a clean pot. So, second hand na siya ito. So, I washed it with water and detergent and pinadry ko na maigi. Ah, diba? Madali lang mag-repot guys. Kayo natatakot. I always advise people to use their hands when repotting. Uh, mas ramdam mo yung sikpag-siksik ng medium sa paso. Dilig-dilig na lang. Ayan. And voila! Finished na. Regarding pest control, I use this washing liquid mixed with water. Um, any dishwashing liquid will do. And then all you have to do is to just spray it to the plants na infested with uh, pests. Ayun, since naging outdoor gardener ako, uh, nagkaroon ako ng problems with pests, especially with caterpillars. Uh, last resort ko po ang gumamit ng uh, insecticide, uh, yung chemical one. So, ang ginagawa ko, I mix parang 3 tablespoons of alcohol and 4 tablespoons of laundry uh, sorry, dishwashing detergent and mix it with 1 liter of uh, water so, ako, I just eyeball it hindi ko siya hindi ko siya minimeasure just minsan inaamoy ko ganyan <laughs> uh, medyo tamad po tayo sa mga ganitong bagay-bagay so, 1, 2, 3. Shake, 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 thump. And spray mo na dun sa infected or infested na plant. Uh, kung medyo makulit pa rin at ma, ano ang inyong mga peste, ginagamitan ko siya ng two things. Uh, Starkle. Nabibili siya commercially sa mga you know, uh, garden centers and uh, yung insecticide na for garden, yung garden safe insecticide uh, last resort si garden safe insecticide si Starkle muna uh, what Starkle does kasi uh, it, ginagawa niyang poisonous yung katawan ng plant and you know uh, pag tiray na kainin nung pest yung plant. Mamamatay na siya. Uh, yung insecticide kasi, I'm really scared of using it. Uh, dati kasi ginamit ko, nasusunog yung mga leaves ng plants. And I don't want that. Uh, medyo martyrize sa itsura ng mga plants. Na.
thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video that we created for you um, I especially love how you know you can really see how different we are Marquita mo we have different situations we have different um, gardening styles that's um, we have actually we're from different parts of the Philippines uh, merong nasa Manila, Pampanga, Bicol. Sadly, our friends from the south are <laughs> a bit shy. Next time, guys, ah, mga taga Davao. Um, yun, I'm, I'm just so happy that I was able to show you that we have different styles. And there are a lot of factors that you have to consider, like light situation, like the the air circulation, nandiyan pa yung humidity sa lugar nyo. There's so many things that will affect. And also our preferences like um, the potting mix. Mayroon tayong kanya-kanyang signature potting mix. And um, watering style. So, ang, ang masasabi ko is there is no really one size fits all na style. So, um, we learn from people around us and then um, we kind of adapt it dun sa situation natin. So we're, we'll, we'll see how um, this style would work with our particular situation. So kung meron man kayong um, bagong narinig at natutunan sa video, why don't you try it? See if it works for you. See if it works for your situation. And I hope you learned something very, very useful from what we did today. Or at least, nalibang man lang namin kayo in these very stressful times. Thank you for watching. I hope we can do more episodes in the next few weeks. Featuring more plant people in the community. Thank you for watching. Bye, guys.